This is my driver. It's medium, lowest spin, not the lowest. Question for the boys at TXG. There's my drive. It's a 1.8 spin. I'm around 2,200 to 2,000 down to 1.8. Wouldn't want to go lower than that. Low spin drivers. Who should use them? Why should they use them? What are the benefits of low spin, say, over a regular drivers? Let's pass it over to the boys in Canada, the TXG crew. There's still a little bit of confusion. I think when is a low spin and driver mm -hmm. uh, an effective yeah, like when is it a tool, tool for your fitting, basically? When exactly. would you use it, yeah? So I think the question that Mark has posed to us is if you're a high spin player, sort of should you be looking into the low spin driver market? So if you look at these two heads, we've done, some, we've done something pretty extreme uh, in that we've taken the Epic Flash Sub-Zero and put a 14 gram weight in the front. Okay. Actually completely removed the, the, the track weight uh, so we've got the CG as far forward as we can move it. Yeah, it can't get any more forward okay. with this head. And I will also add, these, these two head weights are the exact same head weight. Right. Okay? We have the standard uh, shape at Epic Flash, the weight all the way in the back, again, heavier than the stock weight that comes in the Epic Flash, and move that all the way back. You know, we basically built you up two drivers. Yeah. Kept all the variables the same. Everything else length, was the same shaft flex weight all the rest of it we kept the ventus blue yep. 6x yep. Um, and we basically hit that hit that in, in both heads and tried basically tried to swing the same make the same swing deliveries and see what the numbers produce based on the head weight. as much as we could possibly control it yeah so our outcome was about a thousand rpms of difference uh, in spin mm -hmm. uh, and a slightly lower launch uh, out of the the sub-zero right okay the the net result of that was uh, was fairly close. It was 22 yards yeah. of total distance and 16 yards of carry okay. distance. So significant. Quite, Quite significant. significant. Yeah. Okay. So back to the question that Mark has: Who is who is this for? So ultimately, if you're the player who is who's suffering from that kind of you know high launch, floaty, soft, soft flight, yep. you are going to benefit from hitting the ball a little bit further. In terms of statistics, yeah, your strokes gained are likely to be better if you can get some more yardage off the team. If you can get a little bit further down the fairway. Yep. Now, what are you sacrificing by doing that? Yep. You yep. know, you kind of, in, in this sense, Matt, if, if this was you were talking about and, and you walked in here and you had a driver that you're 164 ball speed, 13.7 launch, 30.100, and you walked out with basically no increase in ball speed, yes. but improved launch and spin, you're going to be a happy camper. For sure. Because we've taken the accuracy of your original driver, sacrificed none of it. In this case, yeah. In this case, and given you 22 additional yes. yards. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, in, in this case, we, we don't have a problem with that. We've given you extra yards. You're still hitting it as accurate as you were. You're going to play better golf. For this exact player, exactly. So, that's a situation where it's a no-brainer. This person has benefited from a low-spin driver. There's really no trade-off for this scenario. Absolutely. Let's move into the scenario where we might find this conversation a little bit more meaningful because, you know, with, with you as a player, your management of the face angle, delivery conditions mm, that's that is, that's is very, point. very good. Um, this is a big one because obviously if the face angle for both of them was basically the same, path and, and attack angle the same, that number wasn't going around much. You can see the standard deviation is only about 0.5 on yep. both of them. Very, so very for, minimal. For a person that is pretty neutral, well the neutral part probably isn't that important, but the face control part, uh -huh. that's where if your face control isn't good, then obviously lower spin is going to cause you some issues, which we'll see in this next part. Correct. The player who's probably struggling with this a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So. You know, we've got, yeah, three and a half up, a couple of degrees in, two out, and we changed that. So we're now a little bit on the steeper side, so we're about a degree down so on the angle of attack. Slightly down mm -hmm. on the ball. Seven, eight degrees uh, out to in. Then it really starts to, starts to matter a lot more when it comes to the, the dispersion. Definitely. Okay, so here we have, on this case, similar scenarios. So you've lowered your launch, lowered your spin, increased your distance, but it has come at a price this a big time. Big price. It looks like at least twice as much dispersion Correct. Uh, variance as, as the other one. So this comes down to the design of a low spin driver, mm -hmm. right? So, and, and I think this is where Mark's getting at when, yeah. when it comes to this type of thing. You know, does it always, you know, does a low spin driver always help the high spin player? Mm. The answer would be no. Only in one category, which is distance. It doesn't really help them in keeping the ball in play, for Absolutely, example. right? So if, if we're looking at, you know, missing that ball to the right, let's see how much we are missing it. 
on average we're missing it. So your biggest miss with the uh, within the CG was further back was actually six yards. Right. Your biggest miss with the CG forward was 30 yards. Yeah, and big difference. Big, big difference on, on, on that front. So when you take the player who's a little bit steep, a little bit across it, move that CG further forward, they will have a harder time rotating the club face. This is a really interesting one. So basically more forward CG promotes the face to stay a little bit more square, rotate less. Absolutely. And this driver, and this is a really good example because it looks obviously really far back here. Yep. This is easier to rotate easier in motion to, because exactly. the CG is further back. That's it. Gotcha. So when we look at, you know, what produces uh, obviously, you know, sort of lower scores, et cetera, et cetera, um, there's, there's always, there's always a bit of both needed. Yep. So we're never prepared to sacrifice all of the accuracy for mm. more distance. That's correct, yeah, a balance right. of, of both is kind of what you should be, be looking for. Right? Exactly, yep. exactly. So um, I think the answer to Mark's question is it, it doesn't always help uh, the high Definitely. spin player. I'm looking at the face angle on both mm. and it's very, very similar on average, very similar on angle of attack. So what we're looking at is the difference in spin axis tilt yep. on obviously those two shots. So when we have more vertical spin, right, right. we are going to hit the ball straight. So th th it's very, very uh, difficult to tilt the spin axis on, you know, on, the, on the ball. Yeah, it's not going to get on this axis yeah. and then continue spinning left. Exactly. And we want to try and kind of, you know, and, and I know Mark will, you know, be in the same camp when it comes to this. We want to try and rid ourselves or rid the industry of this kind of conversation about side spin. Yes. Not a thing, obviously. There's no such thing as side spin. We have, we have, an, we have a spin axis tilt, we have a horizontal, we have a vertical spin axis, and we're trying to minimize the horizontal spin axis tilt. The tilting of the axis. Correct. Gotcha. The more vertical spin we have, the harder it is to tilt that horizontal spin axis. And, that, and I know that's getting a little bit more technical than really the message. We're trying to simplify a message yeah. here, but that in, is, is the nuts and bolts of what we're actually talking well, about. Well, it's here. a very important point because I think there's so many misconceptions about side spin versus back spin. More spin, which is the only kind of spin, is actually yeah. going to make the ball go straighter. Exactly. Not less. Exactly. So there's there's two different players. So does does the the low spin driver help the player with great face control that's a, that's a good summary it does it absolutely does does the low spin driver help the player with with bad face control yeah no it does not so they're both you can generalize them and say i'm a high spin player Correct. and your buddy's a high spin player mm -hmm. but you have good control of the face your buddy does not yeah he really shouldn't be in this Correct. consideration unless he's willing to miss you know a lot of yep. fairways are you prepared to put a 700 horsepower engine into a car with bad steering that's a good point yeah. no are you prepared to put it into a car that has the best handling on the road out there? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's really what we're talking about here. Can you control mm. what it gives you? It gives you a higher output, it gives you a higher potential, but the, it also gives you a higher potential to miss it offline. Miss it offline. If someone is, just the last thing I would say, someone who is hitting up on the ball, mm -hmm. who has really good delivery, they, they deliver a little bit of shaft lean, I guess. Yep. So they're not adding excess loft, they mm -hmm. hit up on it a little bit. There's really no reason for them to ever really look at a low spin driver because they don't produce a ton of spin. Right. Yeah. And then they can pick a driver that's easier to hit, more stable, generates a bit more stability in the ball flight too, and they'll, they'll hit more fairways. It's a great point. Uh, I mean, understand your delivery conditions. If you don't require that, if you tend to lean the shaft a little bit, but while hitting up on it, yeah. um, then you know you, you by no means need the, the center of gravity to be further forward like that. Because you create a low spin driver on your correct, own. Correct, correct. Yeah. And you may also, you know, back to the other part of this is very important is in the strike location. Mm. So if you're knowing your tendencies of where you want to strike it, again, are, are another, is it another thing you want to consider whether you're choosing a low spin or a, a kind of higher spin ahead. Because if you live in this area, like I sometimes struggle with, a low spin driver is a bit of a nightmare. It's a huge danger. Whereas mine, it's a higher spinning. I know it's not a, a, yep. a high spin driver, but it's much more stable up here. It produces a bit more spin and I can get away with that shot. Definitely. So again, face control, strike control, strike pattern. Mm -hmm. Those are huge if you're going to pick something that has just a low margin for error. Exactly. Basically. Brilliant guys, thanks for your time. Absolutely strike, delivery, all great messages for anyone getting fit. I think sometimes people get a little bit lost in the romance of low spin drivers. I certainly did once, where the reality of gaming them day in, day out, when the drop-offs can be so dramatic, I think can hurt people. They're very niche -y. And I do think a few golfers get a little bit lost as well, thinking that, you know, oh, I spin my driver a lot. It kind of goes up in the air and spins. I don't hit as far. I need a low spin driver. 
as the guys are saying there, strike's going to really rule the roost if you can or can't actually manage that club over a period of time. Thanks for your time, as always, TXG. Uh, maybe check their YouTube channel out, give them a subscribe as well. Um, and loads more coming from them. Post in the comments if you like the collaboration with these guys. This is what I love about YouTube. In an environment filling up with very unprofessional voices, there are still some fantastic professionals out there trying to make sure that some good messages are being driven forward, which is kind of what I started my old channel on as well. So I'd love to work with these guys and hopefully you'll do more. If you want to see more, post in those comments down below. Let me know. Check that video out. It's a really good one. Hit that subscribe button over there as well. And thanks for this follower, at Crossfield Mark on Instagram for following. If you want to call out at the end of the videos, just make sure you're following at Crossfield Mark and subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.